I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us again at the Azure Academy. We're continuing our Windows Virtual Desktop series today, talking about the new diagnostic web interface. So if you haven't done so already, please click on the subscribe button. It does let uh, YouTube know that you're interested in following our content, as well as give us some comments below on questions you have or anything you'd like us to work on creating for the future. Let's jump over to PowerShell as we get started here. So up until now, when we've had to do any kind of diagnostics on what's going on in our Windows Virtual Desktop sessions, is we could run a command, kind of like this, where we would specify uh, the function of get RDS diagnostic activities, put in our tenant name, perhaps give it a start and end date, and then do some sorting. And when we did that, we would end up with something that looked like this. So because I formatted this as a table, this is what our output looks like and related to whatever it was that you were looking for. So now let me clear the screen here and I'll also run this particular command on a specific activity. So this won't work in your environment because this is one of my activities. And what we do, we see the result for whatever happened. And this was a connection type activity for my user Hulk and what instances were involved in this. And you can see here some of the session host names uh, as well as what was the outcome. In this case, it was a failure and this was completed and you can see the last heartbeat time as well. This is certainly still valuable and, and good to, to be using going forward, but there is now a web tool that you can use instead of PowerShell, which makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to know how to write all of these particular commands. So let's go over to the Azure documentation. So I'll have a link to this in the description down below. So feel free to click on that to get here. Basically, this talks about the steps of how to deploy this diagnostic tool. So we have some prerequisites here. First of all, you must own your own Azure subscription. Of course, you need an Azure Active Directory as well. And you need to have the permissions to be able to create resources in your subscription. And you also need permissions to create an Azure AD app. So let me show you where this is so we go back to the Azure portal we'll go to Azure Active Directory and in the blade here at the bottom we want to go to user settings and then this section here app registrations users can register applications this needs to be turned on in order for this to work once it does work we're going to create an app registration now that app registration is going to be different than the two that I currently have here this is my service principle that has permissions to build Windows virtual desktop uh, this particular app registration is related to the web management UI that we've used several times and if you don't know how to deploy that I'll put a link in the card over here go check that video out. And we're going to create a new one today for the diagnostics interface. Now the other thing that we're going to need here is the Azure PowerShell module and Azure AD module in order to do these two steps. And if you haven't downloaded those, then uh, click here to download and install each of those. Now we will also need our subscription ID, so be sure that you have that handy. And with that, we're ready to start. So I've already downloaded all these scripts so that I can run them, but in the GitHub repository, and there is a link right here, and that'll also be linked in the description below, the scripts directory, you wanna download these scripts so that you can run them, store them wherever you like. I have mine in my C temp directory. And then once that step is done, then we'll come back here and click the deploy to Azure. So back in our docs, we're going to continue with creating our Azure Active Directory app so we can get that running, and then there's also another script in the GitHub for creating a log analytics workspace and that is also right here so let me show you how this works so I've got a section down here that I've commented out so you can store all of your names that you want to use as inputs as well as capture the outputs so we'll run our first script here and we need now a name for our app registration so I'll be using this name aa-wvd-diags and I'll paste that and then it's asking us for our credentials. And after a few seconds, it's now created our app registration. So what's happening behind the scenes is we've created the app registration. We're waiting for it to be now detected through the system. And now we've assigned the role of RDS contributor to that particular app registration. Now the info that we need to capture down here is the client ID and the client secret. So let me copy these and I'll paste them over here just for use later. Now we need that second script, so let me clear the screen. And this second script is going to create us that log analytics workspace. So we'll run that script. And now we need to know the resource group name where we're going to store these resources. So back in the Azure portal, I'm gonna store them in my WVD management resource group. 
and we'll paste that. And then we need a name for the workspace. So for that, I use a name that I've already set up and then we need a location. So I'm going to do this in the East US. And now we need our subscription ID and you should be able to copy that out of the Azure portal and we'll paste that. And now we need our account that has uh, permissions to create resources. So at least contributor, if not owner, and we'll hit okay. And now this is going to go through and create a log analytics workspace. And it's verifying that a workspace with that name does not exist. So it's going to spin up a new one. And as we can see here in the Azure portal, there it is. And it'll be done in just a few moments. Okay, and that process is now complete. Now, if we look back at the script here a little bit, we see that our script here has also created all of the performance counters that our doc said that we needed. So this script did both of those for us. And now we need to capture here the log analytics workspace ID. So I'll save that here so that we can use that in our build. So let's go back to the Azure portal real quick and we'll open the log analytics workspace and then we'll go down to the advanced settings and under data here and then the performance counters we see there are all of the settings so if you had a workspace already existing you wanted to use you would just need to put in all of these items and the way that you can do that is through the search box here at the top now you can find all of these again as I said in the documentation here so you could just copy something like the disk queue length and then go back and then you could just paste it in here and then hit add so you could add all of these in that way if you wanted to use an existing workspace all right so we're ready now to do the deployment so let's go back to github and now we'll click our deploy to azure button and we'll sign in and now we need to select which resource group we want to deploy this to. I will use WVD management. And now we need the information that we captured in our PowerShell script. And here we pasted those values and then we'll go down to click the I agree to the terms. And this is basically going to deploy an Azure web app and a service plan. So if we go back to our WVD management resource group and let's just sort by type. And this build will take a couple minutes. All right, so our build has finished successfully here. Now what we're going to do is open the web app as we need to capture here the URL. So I'll copy that We go back to Azure Active Directory and we go to our app registrations. So there's our new app registration. So we need to open that up and then over here we have authentication. So let's click on that. Now we need to put in a redirect URI. So we'll paste the web address. And then after that, we need to put in forward slash security forward slash sign in dash callback. And this is again inside the documentation under deploy the diagnostic tool, set the redirect URI. And that's where I found that information. Now that that's set, we'll click save and then we'll go back to our web app. All right. So now when we put in the URL or click the browse button here, we'll be redirected. And we'll sign in with our WVD account. And then we have to consent on behalf of our organization, which allows our app registration to talk to Windows Virtual Desktop. And we're in the tool. So now we have our default tenant group already set here. And now we need to paste in our tenant name and then click save. And this is the diagnostics interface. So the way we use this tool is we put in the user's UPN, for example. So I'll put in Thor here. And for our activity types, we have connection, management, and feed. So I'll put in connections and click search. And we see the results. So we don't get different results than we would have seen in PowerShell. This is just another way, as, and as well as it may be a little user-friendlier way. Because all I had to do was know the user's UPN and what type of thing I wanted to look up and hit search. Versus in PowerShell, I would have to type in a long command, something like this, and then I would get my results. Okay, so it's just a little bit of an easier user experience, but it's also a more full featured user experience. For example, here I could click on our session hosts and then get some information about what's going on on that session host, what host pool it was a part of, the session host information, as well as what's currently going on on that system. If there are active user sessions, I could send them a message or tell them to log off if there were. So I can interact with the session host from this diagnostics tool, which makes it more valuable as an administrative tool. So let's look at another type here. So we'll start a new search. So this time we'll use our WVD admin and we'll do a management type and we'll hit search. Okay, and then we see all of the management tasks in our environment and there are quite a lot of them here. 
So for example, this was one of the messages that we got when I was trying to clean up after our Windows Virtual Desktop on Azure Active Directory Domain Services video. And if you didn't catch that, go check it out up here in the card section. And there was a issue. I still had an application group in it. And so that issue was logged here in WVD's diagnostics. So all of those management type uh, incidents are listed here in the diagnostics tool as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at the new diagnostics tool for Windows Virtual Desktop that is available. You can go and install it right now. And it's a way that you can see what's going on in your WVD environment, troubleshoot user connection issues, see what's going on with all of the feeds, interact with the session host to be able to see who's on what boxes, send them messages, have them log off, see their diagnostic information, and do your general troubleshooting as you need to. So if you thought this video was good, then please click on that thumbs up. If not, then well you know what to do and while you're at it click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already it lets the YouTube algorithms know that you're interested in our channel and other people would probably find it useful as well and give us some comments down below on if you prefer to use a web interface like this or PowerShell for your diagnostics or any other questions or comments that you may have and while you're at it why don't you click the notification bell so you can receive an email when our new videos come out which is roughly once a week and thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Happy learning.